Thanks for joining me here on YouTube. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade, and we have a lot to talk about. Of course, last week, I think at one point, I was tracking maybe five different systems out in the Atlantic, and then, of course, we had Ian develop in the Caribbean, and now it will start to push into the Gulf of Mexico over the next 24 hours. So let's get right to it. This is the first time so far this season that we're expecting the potential for a major hurricane to impact the U.S. Ian has rapidly intensified for today and as of the last update just a few minutes ago it is now up to a category two hurricane with maximum sustained winds right at 100 miles per hour it's moving over very warm deep waters of the northwest caribbean and the same case will be for the southern gulf of mexico as it crosses over cuba tonight into tomorrow morning and pushes into the southern gulf very warm waters, very low wind shear. So as you go up vertically in the atmosphere, there's not much to really rip the storm or tear the storm apart. So it is going to maintain its strength and stay pretty healthy and likely intensify even more as we go over the next couple of days. Movement to the north northwest around 13 miles per hour and pressure now down to 972 millibars. Usually when you see that pressure falling, that coincides with the hurricane strengthening. So this is something we're gonna watch closely. We've had hurricane hunters flying into the system and they'll continue to relay data back to us and that will be put into the computer models to give us more of an accurate forecast as we go along. But it does appear that much of Florida definitely in the path. First of all, it's got to cross over Cuba tonight into early Tuesday, likely as a strong cat two or maybe a cat three major hurricane. So we've got hurricane warnings where you see that red outline there for portions of western Cuba. So a lot of damage could be done from storm surge, heavy rain and wind gusts potentially over 100 miles per hour rolling across the western tip of Cuba for tonight and early Tuesday. Then as Ian pushes into the southern Gulf of Mexico, it is really going to strengthen. In fact, I think by the middle of the week on Wednesday, it's likely a category four hurricane as it approaches Tampa. In fact, we now have hurricane warnings and storm surge warnings in place for the city of Tampa. A lot of people live there, so this is going to have high impacts to not only Tampa, but for a big chunk of the state of Florida. So we are going to be monitoring things closely, but it looks like most of the models are projecting Ian to weaken as it runs into a less favorable environment by the end of the work week. This will be late Thursday into Friday after it makes landfall most likely, but before then it is going to be a very powerful and dangerous hurricane. I want to show you the track. This is a wider view right now, a cat two in the northwestern Caribbean. It's just south of the western tip of Cuba. It's going to cross over Cuba tonight into early Tuesday and by 1 p.m. Tuesday. Look at that a category four hurricane on our hands. It will maintain that category four hurricane status for Wednesday afternoon and then get pretty close to the western coast of Florida. This is going to be the western Gulf Coast, very close to Tampa, maybe just north of Tampa, making that landfall likely late Wednesday night, early Thursday, and it will likely still be a strong Cat 2, potentially a Cat 3 major hurricane as it makes that landfall. Then it's going to push into northern Florida and maybe eventually up into parts of Georgia, maybe impacting Atlanta with some very heavy rain. But we're talking about super warm waters out there that this hurricane will be rolling over. Middle 80s for those sea surface temperatures. So that's going to act as basically fuel for this system to continue to strengthen. I want to show you one of our main computer models that we look at. This is the GFS American model, and this gives you a pretty good indication of what we are expecting to happen with this hurricane. It is going to push over the western portion of Cuba tonight and early Tuesday. By the middle of the week on Wednesday, right at 3 p.m., the GFS model has this hurricane basically just west of Tampa. It's kind of hugging that western Gulf Coast, so not quite making landfall then, but I think late Wednesday night, early Thursday into Friday, it's making landfall. It's wreaking havoc across portions of Florida, right around the Big Bend area. Several inches of rain possible. Storm surge as it makes landfall in Tampa, maybe around five to 10 feet. 
tons of rainfall and then you've got the wind gust over 100 miles per hour so this could be pretty catastrophic for Tampa and other portions of the western Florida Gulf Coast. After that it's going to ride up into Georgia maybe dumping some very heavy rain for the Atlanta area. This is the Euro or European model so this is another one that's usually fairly reliable that we like to look at. This one actually tries to keep it right off of the coast of Florida a little longer instead of making that landfall late Wednesday, early Thursday. It's a little closer to late Thursday into Friday and it keeps it a little bit farther north of Tampa. But regardless, Tampa will still be receiving major impacts from this. We're talking about several inches of rain, possibly more than 10 inches of rain, storm surge that could be as high as 10 feet. That's going to do a lot of damage and also that threat for severe weather including the threat for tornadoes as the system makes landfall. It's going to bring a lot of rain to a big chunk of the southeast. In fact, Raleigh, Atlanta in the path to get some of that rain. What is this going to do for our weather though? I'm sure you're wondering that, but look what's over us. I've got the dry icon painted over us because we're actually going to be on the backside of this hurricane here in Houston and the rest of Southeast Texas. So we're actually going to be getting some drier air on the backside of the system that along with a cool front that dropped south. That means lower humidity, very dry conditions, lots of sunshine for us, but tons of rain, unfortunately getting dumped on a big portion of Florida and the South east not just for a short period of time but this is likely going to be going on for parts of tuesday wednesday thursday even into friday then as we go into the weekend it's still going to be impacting portions of the Carolinas, maybe portions of Georgia. So that just means a lot of rain and a huge threat for flooding. In fact, I think this map tells the story, the expected rainfall from Hurricane Ian. This is through the end of the week. This is through Sunday night. And I want to pinpoint this white area here right around the Tampa Bay area. That is 10 plus inches of rain. That is a lot of rain to deal with, and that is going to lead to a high flood threat over the coming days. So certainly we are monitoring this closely. No impacts for us in Southeast Texas, thank goodness, but we will have to keep a close eye on it because there are a lot of people in danger and in the path of that damaging, dangerous hurricane in Florida and the Southeast. I want to talk about 2022, our hurricane season so far, and so far this year, it's been a below normal season. You know, it was kind of a slow start. We started to pick up steam over the last few weeks and especially last week, several name systems, but even then it's still a little below normal so far. Normally we have about 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes. That's an average season from about 1991 to 2020. That's what we're basing it on so far this year for 2022 nine named storms that's below normal four hurricanes that's a little below the norm and just one major hurricane so once ian strengthens to a category three hurricane we would have two major hurricanes so far for this season so hopefully we can keep things a little below the norm hopefully after ian things will settle down however I'm tracking another tropical wave out in the central Atlantic. This one with about a 70% shot for development over the next two to five days. So it's still far away from us, well away from the US and also from the Caribbean islands, but it is pushing off to the west and it's something that we will monitor closely, but we've still got several days to track that. But of greatest concern right now, Hurricane Ian likely going to cause some major disruptions for a big chunk of the state of Florida. Of course, if you want more on the tropics, you can also head to our Fox 26 weather app. Make sure to head to the app store if you don't already have that. Download the Fox 26 weather app. You can get the latest on the tropics, on your local weather. Pretty quiet here, but you know it doesn't stay that way. That heavy rain, flood threat, severe storms can quickly pop up, so you can always keep up with the latest there. Also, check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Ramesha Shade TV, Facebook, Ramesha Shade Weather, and Instagram, at Ramesha Shade. I just added a little ice skating video on there. You can see that as well. Have a good evening and stay safe out there.